Kelly. Uh, this is Erin McManus. Um, we teach Taekwondo. Um, we also do Keto and um, Philippine combatives. So we have a lot of different things that we're going to teach you today or show you today, a lot of different things from all of those, um, all those disciplines. Um, I have a fifth dan in Taekwondo, a third dan in Hapkido, and we'll be testing for my first dan in um, Philippine Combatives. And Aaron is one of our instructors with the third dan in Taekwondo. I've been doing this for 20 a lot of years. Um, and so, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Aaron's doing this since you were, say, eight? Mm -hmm. Eight. She's 21, so she's been with us a long time. So I've known her since she was little. Um, and she's grown up to be one of our um, one of our best instructors. So it's it's been really nice to have her, and she so graciously accepted to come and help out because I know I have a lot of people, so I need somebody to help hold some some pads for us today. Um, I just want to kind of give a little brief description about what we're going to do today. We're going to learn a lot of different things, some different techniques, and we'll talk about some stuff. Um, a couple of the things that you need to be most not um, just cognizant of as you go through is to pick one or two things that work for you. We're going to show you a lot of different techniques. We're going to show you several different kicks and knees and elbows and hand techniques. But the reason we do that is so that you find something that works for you. And there's going to be something that you really like and something you really hate. So I want you to, um, when you're in a situation and your brain freezes and things don't go as well as they plan, it's going to be what you feel comfortable with doing is what's going to come out. So that's what I want you to kind of work on today is trying to figure out what that thing is that you like to do and what's comfortable for you, um, what is really good for your body structure and those kinds of things. And the other thing is to just be aware. Um, Self-defense is 95% perception and awareness and paying attention to your surroundings and 5% doing something about it if something goes wrong. So we want to be in that, try to work on that 95% first and if something happens then we can fall back on that. What we're going to do today is just work on a little tiny piece of the iceberg. There's thousands of techniques and hours and hours of time that you could spend doing this to get all of that muscle memory, to make it really simple and easy for you to remember a few things. So kind of the analogy is this is kind of your first day to medical school. So we're just going to do a little bit of stuff today, so hopefully it will help you out. If you want to have more information in your brain, more body work, things like that, um, I suggest you take a class. And it's not necessarily with us. You can take classes all over um, the city. There's a lot of good schools out there that you, um, that you could do martial arts in or other <coughs> types of things that you would feel better about handling yourself out in the world if something happens. Um, has anybody had any martial arts experience? Yeah, kickboxers. <laughs> kickboxers, yeah, it's a few kickboxers. That works. That works. Yeah, that works. Um, has anybody actually been into um, a situation? Have you been attacked or in a fight or anything like that? No? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in Lincoln, uh, we have actually really good violent crime rates. Um, we have really, actually, one of the lowest um, violent crime rates um, in the country. And actually, in the whole country, we have violent crime rates back in the 60s. So it peaked a little bit in the uh, late 80s and 90s and we're back down. So things are good, but they're not always perfect. Um, in 2010, there were 15,000 murders in the US. That's almost two a day. But that's, you know, if you think about Chicago, it's in those big cities. We don't have a lot here, but it can happen. There's 90,000 forcible rapes that are reported, one every six minutes. Um, one out of every six women is raped. Nearly 40% by a friend or an acquaintance and 30% by an intimate. So 70 percent of the women that are raped know their attacker very well. Over 3,600 aggravated assaults and robberies happen every day, 49,000 carjackings or attempted carjackings, and one burglary every 15.4 seconds. So there's a lot of bad stuff that happens, but we have to realize that uh, we are we're very fortunate here, but we always have to be vigilant to keep those things from happening to us and making sure that we're paying attention to our, surround or our surroundings. So the first thing we're going to talk about is prevention, being a tough target, how not to be a victim. So habits. What are some things that you have learned or have been told about being that tough target, about how you carry yourself, things like that? Does anybody know? Like taking different ways home and that sort of thing? 
Yeah, very good. Yep, take you different routes home. So that if somebody's watching you, they don't always see that you go home the same way. Um, also allows you to know your surroundings a lot better in case you do have to drive a different place if somebody's following you or if you have a car breakdown, uh, things like that. You kind of know a little bit more than just one path and one way home. Um, anything else? Mine's two things. Yeah. I was told to be on the phone with someone if I'm out by myself mm -hmm. and to carry my car keys. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Carrying your car keys is good. You should always have your car keys out ready before you leave work, before you leave the mall, before you go anywhere. And hold the space in between your fingers. Yes, yeah, and you can absolutely do that. Um, make sure that the first one that you're going to use is probably right here. <laughs> so that you're not fumbling with them. That's the biggest thing, is making sure you're not fumbling with your keys and focusing here when somebody else can come and attack you. Um, what was the first one you said? Uh, be on your phone. Oh, be on your phone. It's good. That's a good thing. But make sure that you're not being sucked in to the phone so that you can still see what's going on. Um, some other things, if you're out running and jogging, try not to go alone. Take a dog, a person, it's always helpful. Um, in fact, studies show that if you run with an animal or with a person, you actually run further, run harder, burn more calories. So I know that everybody wants to do that. <laughs> but um, so there you go, there's your reason. And uh, another reason, another thing to do is if you have to wear headphones, very, very low. So they should never be loud enough so that you can't hear somebody coming up behind you or seeing a car. That's out of safety for yourself. You run across the street, you don't see a car or hear something like that. But making sure that you can, again, know your surroundings, know things that um, go on in your areas. Um, Well-lit places, try to walk the well-lit places. If you see an area, the traffic lights are off, don't walk that direction, take a different route, um, around that direction. If you're downtown, don't go through an alley. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you know, sometimes those those thoughts run through your head and you're just like, ah, it'll be fine. Um, being alert, that's probably the biggest thing to be aware of, is to be alert in your surroundings. Check your car before you get in. Most things happen. Um, attacks or burglaries or people seeing the curse, things like that, happen in what we call transition places. So you're going from your car to taking out, um, you're taking your groceries in. So you're leaning over your trunk or in your back seat. Um, you're taking out the trash. You're doing things that you're concentrating on something else. You're moving from one thing to another. That's when those things are going to happen. So that's when you're not paying attention to those surroundings. You're not as alert as normal. Um, so again, try to make that awareness level a little heightened as you go about your daily routine. Just making that a habit is not easy, but it's something that will help in the long run. So that you're paying attention to the bushes where you normally walk out to take the trash, or you're paying attention to um, the car that's sitting across the street that normally doesn't sit there, um, those kinds of things. I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so I have an almost nine month old daughter, and I know that people here with kids too. And when you're putting your kids in and out of their car seats, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking about like, because I don't see her car seat out of the car anymore, she weighs 21 pounds. So yeah. That's yeah, ridiculous. There's 40 pounds around in the car seat and lug it up into the car. So I leave it in the car and then I put her in and out mm -hmm. of the car seat. And I could probably, I don't know how long it takes you to put your kids in the car seat, like five minutes? Well, three minutes? Yeah. Depends. Yeah. Minutes. Yeah. Just being, standing there, like, punched over. Yeah. You know, being aware. Seat. You know, if you're at your home, go all the way into the garage if you can. Okay. Um, if you are out and about, make sure that you're not right next to another car. You know, pay attention to if there's people in cars. You know, if you pull into the mall or you pull into Target or wherever, park a little bit of ways. You know, make sure that you're not, you know, if you don't open your door and there's somebody sitting right there. I actually did that the other day. I watched as somebody was sitting in there. So I looked for a second, they were on their phone. I watched for a second, and they still sat there. So as I opened my door, I continued to watch, and closed my car, clicked it, you know, whatever. Continued to watch them as I walked into the mall. Um, so you're just paying attention to those kinds of things and seeing those people. Don't park next to bushes and trees, things like that, so that you can be a little bit more buffer zone around you while you're paying attention to your kid. So, and just as you walk to your car, if you have them in your hand or if they're walking.
walking next to you. Again, eye contact with people around you, paying attention to um, where people are and where other cars are and things like that. So that's a good question. Um, gut instincts. So when you talk about those kinds of things, if you are walking, your dog, or you're walking, you're running on a, on a trail, or things like that. If you see something that kind of freaks you out a little bit, cross the street, no big deal. You know, they're not gonna know any different. They're gonna think that's the path you normally take. Um, and if they do think you're weird, so what? And you know, if you're on a trail, stop, let them pass. No matter what it is, you know, whether you're in the mall, somebody comes, comes up to you, just give them a little bit more leeway. So that they're not brushing by you to take your purse or to take something out of your pocket. Being just aware, again, really doing precautionary stuff. Purses, I always buy purses with zippers, zip them shut, rather than just a little clamp, clamp or, or snap or any of those kinds of things. Making sure that those kinds of things are safe, the valuables are safe. And, you know, if somebody does try to grab it, throw it one direction and you go the other direction. So whatever's in there is not worth what could happen to you. Um, so along those lines, remembering to be confident that you are worth fighting for is important. So if no matter what happens, you have to do whatever you have to do to get out of that situation. So whether it be biting, whether it be gouging eyes, whether it be hitting private parts, things like that, being comfortable is one thing. Having a good attitude about it is another. And being willing to do whatever it takes to get you out of that situation is important. So last time we had talked, um, last week when I had another group, we had talked about if somebody's kissing you, you know, if they're forcefully kissing you, biting them on the lip. And they were like, ew. I'm like, well, it's either that, or you get hauled off somewhere, or you get raped. That's the choice you have to make sometimes. So being aware that sometimes you might have to do things that are going to be out of your comfort zone, they're going to take you on that edge of, Ugh, I'm not sure if I can do that. But you have to understand that you're way worth fighting for. Because we all have families, we all have friends, and they would be heartbroken if something happened to you. So you have to understand that the person who's perpetrating that crime on you is lowest of the low. They're dirt, they're scum, they're nothing but you're worth fighting for every step of the way. Talking about that whole, if somebody attacks you thing. So say something went wrong, you've looked at everything, you've watched everything, you carry your keys, you do all your stuff, you got attacked. You got about three to five seconds to react, do something, okay? And whatever that something is, we're gonna talk about other options with kicking and punching and things like that. But you can also yell. Mm -hmm. Just yelling is, is good. So what should you yell? <coughs> Does anybody know if you get attacked? What you should yell? <laughs> what, the, what word? Uh, help? Okay. If somebody, if you're home and you heard help, say you're in an apartment, <laughs> do you think a lot of people would, would come to that? I think some people would, but not everybody, right? Mm -hmm. But a better one is fire, is fire, absolutely. So fire, people yell, fire, 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 help, fire. People are going to come out. It's kind of like a tornado in Nebraska. It's like, whoa, there's fire. If, um, even if somebody doesn't see smoke necessarily, fire spreads. So fire can encroach on their personal stuff. So their house, their apartment, their things. So they don't have to be afraid to get involved with that situation. Somebody yelled fire, and so I'm just calling and want somebody to investigate that kind of thing. So it's a lot better to yell fire because, again, it spreads. It will um, allow people to kind of be anonymous, as they call in, to get that help to wherever it needs to be. Um, realizing the law and realizing the, the level of threat is also an important thing. So if some guy or girl somebody just grabs my arm, do I have the right to break their nose, break their leg, and smash their head into the concrete and put them in the hospital? No. No. Okay. 
it's very difficult sometimes to realize this level of threat. Now, if you are, if they have something in their hand, if they, if, no matter what it is, that's assault with a deadly weapon, no matter what it is, okay? So you, then you have the right to defend yourself. You need to always understand that if somebody just grabs you, we're going to show you a few things, you can just get away. Nebraska has, we don't necessarily have a castle law, but in our laws, if you're outside of your home, you need to try to retreat. You need to get them where they need to be, off of you, whatever, and you need to retreat. In your home, it's another story, and you can make sure that they stay in your home, but we'll talk about that yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and with that, if you have something in your possession, like a weapon, like a knife, like mace, taser, things like that, those are great things to have with you. You can still carry, carry, have a gun. Those are great things, but you have to understand that those things can be removed from your possession and used against you. So you have to have no qualms about using whatever you have immediately. So if you do carry a gun, you have to understand that you have to be able to use it. If you carry a knife, you have to understand that you need to be able to use it. You can't think twice. You can't think, oh my gosh, that's a person, I might cut them. Yeah. You might, because you have a deadly weapon. That's the thing. You gotta understand that if you're gonna, you know, spray mace, it may get on yourself. It may hinder your ability to run. If you have a taser, you might be able to get it away from you and taser you. And that's a bad situation. But no matter what you have with you, you have to understand that it can be used against you. And you can use a lot of things as weapons. You can use talk about keys. Mm -hmm. Keys are awesome. I carry a lot of keys. Um, to the dismay of my husband and um, my car guy. So, but I love, I have a little lanyard on here that I just put on my hands and so I carry my keys like this when I walk. Okay? Sometimes I have an extra key that I use for defense, but I carry it like this sometimes. Sometimes I carry it like this. It doesn't really matter, but this, if somebody grabs me, even if they grab this hand, okay, you can use it to get out. Right? But if they grab the other hand, or they grab you around the neck, or they grab you someplace else, which would be really silly, but they do, you can use it for defense. And you can use anything for defense. You can use a pen, you can use a water bottle, you can use a coffee cup, you can use your shoe, especially if you have pointy shoes. Those are fantastic for gouging and things like that. Anything can be used as a weapon. Um, a lot of small things, you know, the pens, um, keys, Basically, little points can be used to cause a lot more pain. Um, so it's basically what we call a force multiplier. So it's the force that you are pushing on it, it will exponentially increase that amount of force that's in that one little point, and it will make that force then cause pain. And that's a good thing for you. Mm -hmm. But again, understanding that whatever you want to use, if you're going to use and you carry your keys, you have to be willing to go through. So if you're holding your keys um, in your hands like this, somebody comes up to you, you gotta be willing to use it, willing to, to make sure that you stand your ground and use those things. Um, a couple more things. Where should you hit first? If you need to hit, if somebody grabs you, what would be a good place to go first, or a good place not to go first. Eyes, uh, eyes would be good. Eyes, face. throat, face, throat. absolutely. Where would be a not good place to go first? Arms, arms, yes. chest. Yes. Where else would you think you're going to get hit first? Yeah. I'm not going to say. Yeah. Good So if you if your girls you have to get hot, hit low, it does hurt. Not to the same extent, I'm sure. But um, but that's a place to go secondary. So yes, first place you want to go, absolutely. Eyes, nose, ears, face. A lot of different places you can go. We have pressure points all along our body. Right, you guys have heard of pressure points? Basically places where your nerve bundles are closer to the skin. So you can basically we can call activate those and cause a lot of pain. Sometimes there it's more pressure, sometimes it's shooting pain, sometimes it's radiating pain, it kind of depends on what it 
it is. But if somebody grabs you, you can always, you know, we're going to do a lot of different things to the nose and to the throat. And we have pressure points, temples, back in the ears, a lot of different places. And the armpits, and the groin area, the side of your body here. There's just a lot of different places we can go. And that's where you want to go first. Because if somebody grabs you and you hit them, say you, you hit them before. Say you have no idea what you're doing. Say you're freaking out and things are, oh, okay. You hit him in the forehead. What's happening? What's opened up? Oh. <laughs> okay. And then what happens when you hit here? The face comes forward. Okay. And then you can go there. We call that the high-low principle. Okay. So when you hit high, the low comes out. When you hit low, the high comes out. Okay. So it's just the seesaw effect. Okay. Of hitting them a couple times, messing up the body, and then you can get away. So we're going to do a bunch of things like that as well that we're going to work on. Um, <coughs> Some of the things about where we're going to hit and what we're going to hit. We're going to use our feet, we're going to use our knees, and we're going to use our elbows. Right? Your knees and your elbows are amazing. Right? You have a lot of pressure that you can put on a knee um, or use with your knee to create a lot of force. Same thing with your elbow. Elbows don't have a lot of nerves in them, so they make very, very good weapons. Right? Because a lot of times when you're attacked, you're close. And you're not always out here, so you can always kick and do all sorts of fancy things, okay? Which I don't want you to do. So, but you're here, nice and close, all right? An elbow to the face is going to hurt, all right? The MMA guys, it hurts, all right? They bleed really quickly, things like that. You can cause any sort of damage to the nose, to the eyes, you know, anything like that. They're going to start to either bleed or their eyes are going to water, and then they're going to help that's going to help you get away. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with that as well. Um, I think that might be. Oh, one more thing. So we're going to be nasty, right? Okay. So if somebody does attack you, who is number one? Who's number one in that sort of scenario? Who do you need to watch out for if you're attacked? yourself, okay? So again, I really want to emphasize, we're going to pick a couple techniques, we're going to try to make whatever those techniques are that you want to do, best as you can make them, hard as you can make them, so that when you, if you have to use them, they're really, really good for you, all right? Because you are the most important thing, right? Okay, I want to make sure that that's very clear. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get up. If you have fancy shoes on, You'll need to take them off because I don't want you to hurt my bags. But if you have tennis shoes on, um, tennis shoes on, you're fine. And you get to use your, you can use your boot. I taught class for, I don't know, for months with a boot on it, so it works out well. Yeah, you need to just shove that boot anywhere. In there. Absolutely, absolutely will work. Um, so we're going to make a couple groups. So we're going to make a group on this side, we're going to make a group on this side. And we're going to start with our big bags. So, so I need everybody stand up and split off. Group over there, group over here. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> so it's not about making sure you're up and you're extended and you're balanced and this and that. I just want you to hit it as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just finding out what works for you, pushing yourself into that path. All right? So we're going to do three on each foot, and then you're going to go back to the end of your line. 